My father passed away a few months ago. 76 years old. Every time somebody that age passes on, I think, I bet you think this too sometime, I do. I start to think whether we will ever see the likes of that generation again. And I sure do have my doubts. That generation of Americans, even though they were most uneducated of any of us, they had the most honor and dignity and self-respect and integrity and a thumbnail than the rest of the Americans got now in the whole damn body. See, you, you, you try to picture in your mind your mom and daddy, your grandmother or grandfather, and do you think how unheard of, how unheard of it would be for them to actually sit in the living room hoping that some local or federal official will help them take the gun away from their boy. Oh, God. They'd have smacked some kid. They'd have half killed him himself. Now, I know it seems old-fashioned, but, you know, you have to be reminded that that generation of Americans didn't raise crack addicts and drive-by shooters. They raised damn kids. So, you know... Now, we got all these new words now that ain't working. Therapy, counseling. Yeah, my daddy took me to counseling, all right. <laughs> How about this, bonding? Ain't that a new word? Bonded. It works like this. You're 35, your dad is 60. Have you bonded? Have you bonded? My father and I never bonded. We posted bond for each other. <laughs> Let, me. <laughs> Let me tell you guys something. And here's how you know whether you got a good relationship with your dad. Think back when you was like 16 or 17 and you was dating somebody you was wanting to impress and you didn't want to drive your old piece of car on the date so you kept bagging your daddy to let him let you use his car. And you said, if you'll let me use your car, I won't drink. <laughs> liar, liar, liar. <laughs> so he finally gives in and lets you use it. And you're almost home free. It's two o'clock in the morning, you dropped her off somewhere. <laughs> said, I'll be back, I'll get this car home. But just before you get home, the cops pull you over, take you in for driving under the influence, and tow your daddy's car. You're scared to death. You know your daddy is going to whoop your wife. <laughs> you know he is. You've never been as scared in your whole life. You dread calling him. But even though you dread it and you're scared, it never occurs to you to call anybody else but your daddy. You tell the guys he's fingerprinting you down there. Well, hurry up, I need to call my daddy. He'll come and get me. And here's what happens. Next thing you know, the years always go by quicker than we would like for them to. And you're 35 or 36. You got a family of your own. It's late Friday evening. You've mowed the grass. You got a cold beer in your hand. You settle down to watch a ball game and the phone rings. And it's your dad. And his ass is in jail. <laughs> He just beat the out of the UPS man. <laughs> he had told that driver once before, if you back over my wife's flower bed one more time. <laughs> if that was a time when a man did what a man said. So the UPS drunk <laughs> backed over her buttercups Yo, dad's in jail. <laughs> but as they're processing the paperwork, he tells them, well, hurry up. Need to call my boy and he'll come and get me. There's bonding for you right there. <laughs> <laughs>